Hey, welcome back for part two of this video series about insulation blowing machines. I'm going to go through some of the techniques, hoses, uh, and how to use this machine in this video. And if you want to know more about the parts of the machine, or if I throw out a term you're not familiar with, try checking out uh, part one. On this machine, it has a two and a half inch output port, which is right here. From here, you got to hook up some hoses. So let's uh, talk about the hoses to get the insulation where you want it to go. Depending on what you're doing, whether it's an open blow or a dense pack, uh, you may have more or less length of hose or a larger or smaller diameter of hose. Uh, in this case, uh, we have a short section of two and a half inch inside diameter hose. This is, will allow us to actually connect to the machine. Then we have a small reducer and a length of two inch inside diameter hose. Now this two inch inside diameter hose, I have several sections of, so I could extend this out to up to 150 feet. Uh, here's the opening for the two inch inside diameter hose. Now if all I'm doing is blowing an attic where it's just loose on the floor, this might be all I want. But for a lot of things that you do, you might want something different. Now this length, we would commonly call this in the industry Tiger Flex. So this is a 10 foot piece Tiger Flex. And on the other end, we have another reducer. Now, all these reducers are, are pieces from the automotive exhaust industry. So you can pick these up uh, at exhaust shops, uh, or you can order them online. And you can take this reducer and you can put it in here and tighten up the hose clamp and go from your two inch down to, in this case, uh, this hose has an inside diameter of one and a quarter inches. What you don't want to use is the PVC couplers because the thickness of the PVC creates that raised lip uh, which protrudes very much inside the hose and you can clog up uh, where that protrusion is. So using something like the steel, it's very thin uh, but robust enough. Now another great option is a rigid uh, piece of either aluminum or in this case PVC. But again, that PVC, you don't want that thick wall because it can create the dam. So your typical scheduled 40 PVC is very thick. This PVC is sold as a vacuum tube and it has a very thin wall. All right, go ahead and attach your hoses to the machine and make sure you tighten them up with a nut driver. It works better than the flathead. So I've got the remote here over my neck so I always have it close by. First thing I'm gonna do is demonstrate to you what happens if you take the feed gate completely out, but the only situation you would want to use this is if you're just wide open in an attic and you want to make sure that if you're wide open in the attic, you don't have anything smaller on the end of the two inch hose. All right, so here we go. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is turn on the agitator. Then I'm going to turn on the blower. This is wide open. So you can see how much material comes out very quickly. Now we'll go ahead and put the plate in. And we have about an inch opening now for the cellulose to fall down. So remember there might be a little bit in the airlock but then you're going to see the difference. There you go. See how much little cellulose is actually coming out at this point. Okay, it's mostly just air. Now for a lot of situations, you're gonna to wanna to use this Tiger Flex hose. Now this has a one and a quarter inch inside diameter. So we're gonna... All right, so this thing came off, so I'm gonna retape it. Go ahead and slip it on and tighten the hose clamp back up. 
you see the longer velocity that you're getting out of this. <laughs> now the opening of the feed gate is about twice what it was. Now if I was trying to dense pack, I would not run it in this setup, but I might do it if I'm doing what's called a pre-fill where you're filling the cavity loose at first, then going back a second time after you close down the feed gate. So here we are with the agitator and blower. You can see how much more cellulose comes out at this point. And notice the lag there between the agitator shutting off and the blower. I'm doing that manually because you don't want to uh, clog the hose. You kind of want to clear the airlock of any cellulose. And you do that by having the blower on and the agitator off. Now you don't necessarily need to clear the entire hose every time, but you need to clear the airlock to keep the back pressure from pushing cellulose into the blower. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to dense pack this plastic tote to show you how the math works and what to do. So if you're doing your entire wall, you want to measure up your entire wall to get the volume first. In this case, the volume is one foot tall, 1.7 feet long, and uh, 1.125 feet wide. So that gives us a grand total of 1.9 cubic feet, just under two cubic feet worth of volume. Then you want to multiply the volume by the density that you're trying to achieve. In this case, I'm using three and a half pounds per cubic foot, which is what you're gonna use if you're doing a typical wall stud, a two by four, two by six wall stud cavity. Uh, if you're going to dense pack deep cavities, like a double stud construction, like what I did in my house, you're gonna to want to bump that up to a four pound per cubic foot density. That tells me that I need 6.7 pounds of cellulose in this cavity. Now you're gonna be working with numbers that are much larger than that when you're doing an entire addition or an, or an entire house. Uh, that leads us to 6.7 pounds divided by the bag weight. Now in this case, I'm using this Igloo brand cellulose bag. This comes at 25 pounds per bag. So you divide it by the bag weight and that gives you your bag count. Now in this case, it's just over a quarter of a bag. Now that's not very much. Uh, and you wouldn't be able to do that in the field, but you're going to be working with large numbers. So let's say you're working with a, a whole wall, right? So you have four walls in an attic. What you want to do is get the bag count per wall. So let's say you need 20 bags for one wall. Dense pack that one wall, count up how many bags. If you've only blown 18 bags, you know that you need to blow two more bags to achieve the density that you need or if you've blown 21 bags, that's okay. Don't go taking any out. Uh, it just means that you passed that minimum threshold to be considered a proper dense pack. And by proper dense pack, I mean that that insulation needs to be self-supporting in the cavity to prevent any settlement. Now remember the feed gate is at about a two inch opening right now. So it's, it's a medium, it's about halfway in its total uh, travel. So that means I'm gonna be moving more material but I'm not going to be able to achieve as high a density. I have to be careful when I'm doing this not to leave the hose in one place too long because it could, if I wind up dense packing inside this hose, then it can go back and damage the blower itself. And then I just have to take the machine apart and clean everything. Nobody wants to do that. Uh, while I do this, you might see my hand over the top and that's to try to prevent some of the cellulose from blowing back at my face. Uh, so here we go, I'm gonna turn the agitator on first, then the blower. And you can see the cellulose moving around in there. So the first thing we're gonna do is just get that material built up inside here. You're kind of moving around. Alright, now at this point, I'm starting to feel the restriction. I'm moving the hose around to another corner. So I was up here, 
I moved it to the back corner. Well, the tape came off a little bit, and let me show you kind of what it looks like at this point. Now, we're not fully dense packed yet. Let's just take a look at it. Okay, now you see how I can push in. We have a handprint. Remember, the drywall would go on this. But it's still kind of loose. If I was to break this apart, it's, it's not super tight in here yet. But that was about the limit of what I could get on that setting. So let's change the settings up a little bit. Okay, inside the machine, you can see we have about a two inch opening. I'm gonna drop that down to about one inch opening. And then what you can do is you can put the pin in here to hold that in place so you don't change it accidentally. Okay, I just added more cellulose and I turned on the agitator without the blower and it's gonna take these larger chunks and it's breaking them apart. Now you see how easily I can insert that? It's, it's loose in there still. Okay, I'm looking for those weak spots in the container. See, we just found one and it's adding more material. But you gotta be careful. Got to move it around fairly quickly. Right there it's moving. See how that's not falling out? No, it's pretty slippery sides. Yeah, so if I tip this, the whole thing might fall out on me. goes. It's starting to slide out. This right here is still, even though this, this seems like it should be enough, this is about the limit of that machine. But this is not firm enough. Now this is still fairly loose. This might be over three pounds, but uh, not at three and a half yet. Uh, and I can just tell by the feel of it. But this might be okay for say a two by four cavity, but this is not good enough yet. Uh, especially for a deep cavity, it's still very far away from four pounds per cubic foot. Uh, but this is about the limit that machine can handle uh, unless we get a more powerful blower on it. Uh, so I hope this uh, video was helpful and useful for some of you. Uh, if you enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up uh, and share it.